Welcome everyone. Today we'll have a part of Excel 3.1 Delirium League currency farming. So I have farmed about 140 and 150 exalt in the past week. You can see that I'm currently having 127 and about 300 chaos and I have been getting a few gears upgrade. So you don't see the exact number of the weekly pretty much weekly earning but I'll break it down through Excel and I'll go through each of the parts of the earning for you guys so hopefully you guys can find this helpful so the reason of this guide is as a new player I'm not too familiar with you know the magic find setup I'm not too familiar with the best maps to farm and you know the best ways to trade devolve I searched around online there seems to be a unique way for a particular build to be really profitable you know people are farming for the doctor card in the barrel chambers people are farming for particular sync around them so people are farming for a lot of different things so what I want to share with you guys is something that can be useful for most of the players especially new players who's getting into the late game or the end game after tier 10 tier 14 maps you can really use this this very effectively so let's go into the excel summary let's have a look how did I earn my currencies so over here we'll have a very basic Excel and I just basically drafted this up before the recording and the numbers are not exact because I didn't keep a lot of the figures handy. So I haven't counted how many Excel I looted, I haven't counted everything in the week, but this is a rough estimate. So let's have a look. The methods of gaining currencies. For me, over the week, I looted about 6 to 10 exalt ops just from farming. So let's call it we got 6 exalt ops. And this particular one, just because we played a little more and we tend to get more out of it. I'm playing on average about 4 hours, 6 hours, or 8 hours a day, depending on the schedule. Sometimes I stream a bit of Underlord, sometimes I play a bit of Path of Excel, other times I just play offline, so off stream. So on average about 6 to 8 hours a day for the Path of Excel. Now, this is about not the luckiest job. Sometimes I get nothing on a day. Sometimes I get one or two exalted on a day. So next part of my currency earning, I earned about 27 exalt on trading. This is very interesting. And this is the first one I want to share with you guys. So how did I make those incremental currency from trading? So I made a 10 exalt profit. I made a 5, 3.9. So I counted a few of those. So let's come back to the game and let me show you guys the trading system I have. So coming back to the game, what we're going to see is the trading tabs I have. I share my ideas and thoughts with trading and we go from here. So right away, we can see I have a variety shop section. So the variety shop is where I manually adjust the price of things. I want to be on top of things. So sometimes I sell things for a little higher, a little lower. So here you can see I'm selling the palace and also desert spring. Those are for the Patreons. So if you didn't know, you get the Patreons and most people do go for the Patreons for the Soul of Lunars and also the Soul of Shakai for the poison immunity. So those maps actually allows them to finish their Patreon. I was selling them for 12 chaos and a lot of people are still buying them. And each time I was able to get them, I pretty much make one to two exalt of profit just by selling those maps. They are going a little lower at the moment. They can sell for 11 chaos, sometimes, you know, 10 chaos. I'm putting them on 12 because I don't have much supply. How did I get the supply for Palace and Desert Spring? Is that it's there over here and Desert Spring and Palace is all in the section over here. So this is my Lara Attendant section. And basically, I just highlighted three of the maps by selecting them into Desert Spring. And that's how I did it. Because I was selecting them into Desert Spring and also I was selecting them into Palace. So that's Palace is over here. So I selected both of them. And this way, I was dropping about on average 10 or 20 maps a day while I was farming other regions. And I don't touch this region at all. I just sell the maps I get from here. So that's the first way of trading. And the other section of the variety tab is uh, the, uh, we can see the desert spring over here. This is the desert spring and palace. And another section of trading is I've been selling my barrel chambers for about 14 chaos and 15 chaos. People do still buy them. And similar logic is the, let's see, where is Vento, 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 yeah, Vento Stressed. So I basically trip off my Vento Stressed where I selected the target maps, uh, the barrel chambers for tier 14. And I make about at least one exalt a day with those just because I'm farming maps and they're dropping. After that, we won't touch on the details on this. We'll make a special guide on the shopping, but on the selling and trading. But I want to share you guys something useful. So I have, after the variety shop with, you know, seven exalt, you know, I overpriced them a little bit. Sometimes I underpriced things over here. So those are the variables I'm selling. After that, I have a tab for 130, 70, 30, 20, down to 5 chaos. And this is what I do. 
I loot items and eventually all the items end up in the five tab. So the five chaos tab. Before that, if I'm on shelf the price, I overlist them for about 20 or 30 chaos. I have them a little higher, but every now and then I do lower the price a little bit. And because of that, I'm actually getting sales on my items. Not a lot of sales, but those sales do add up to one to three exalt a day because, well, I'm not taking a lot of time researching what price of those items are. I'm just relisting items for a slightly lower price. Hopefully the market will sort it by itself. So the people who are looking for those items will be like, hey, this item's 120 chaos. It's pretty worth it and I'll buy it. And this is when I get some of the sales, not frequently, but one to two exalt a day for this particular setup. And this way I basically use a trade macro and the trade macro suggests me that this item may be worth this is pretty low actually. This is actually found Cyrus. So some of the interesting ones, let's say, let me try to find a good one. So some of the interesting ones like this one, the trade macro suggests 21 to 31 chaos. I just triple the price on that and just list it here. Eventually this will be lowered to let's say 90, 60, 70, or maybe down to 40. And some of those items will get sold eventually. Now there is one more thing I want to share with you guys with trading is that I actually look for items. I start to learn the market of items after I go deeper into the items I need for my class. What do I mean by that? So I made a lot of my early profit by buying and selling convoking ones because I, as a necromancer or a skeleton summoner, I need those ones and I'll be buying them. Because I'm buying them for my own use, I'm actually looking for future upgrades. And if they're low enough price, if I can, you know, speak to the seller to see if I can get, can get a discount, if they do sell it for a discount, what I do is I can sell the existing one I bought, or I can upgrade my gears and sell the one I'm currently using. And by doing this, I'm always buying things that I can actually use instead of buying things that I might not be able to use. So I'm buying things that can be an upgrade for me. If I can't sell it, I just use it and I sell my existing one for pretty much slightly higher than what I bought it for. What I realized is price fluctuate between 20%. This Kamoki one was purchased for about, I think 12 exalt, and the price goes from anywhere from 10 or you know, 12 exalt up to 16 exalt. So if I get an upgrade, this one can be sold for a profit for maybe four to three exalt. And I've been doing that for all my gears. The biggest one and I made the profit is convoking one. I bought about five to six of those because I need those. I know the best stats for them and I know what I need it for. And because I understand those items, I know when there is a profit to be made. If people are underselling it for two to three exalt and I can use them, I'll actually buy it. And later I can use it or I can sell it. And usually it takes me one or two days to sell it, but I do make a bit of profit. So the convoking mount made me about five to six, six out. Next up, I'm actually looking for chess pieces. And I'm actually, I'll show you guys the listing of things I'm looking on the website as well. So I'm looking for chess pieces and I managed to get a really good one today. So this is why I say I made about 140, 150 chaos exalt. And you only see me only have 127 exalt because I spent eight exalt on this chess piece, which for me, it's a definitely a bargain. I would have paid a little more for it. It's a really good chess piece because this takes my skeletons to level 33. Oh, 31. <laughs> 33 is a little far away. We get to level 31 with skeletons by, you know, a lot of damage. And so what I do was I actually monitor the market for items that have plus one sockets and items have plus two socket duration gems. Because I know the market so well, I actually buy some of the underselling ones and I actually sell them for two or three times the price. And one of the biggest sell I got was I bought a chess piece for one exalt. I sold it for 12 exalt. Now this doesn't come easily because unless you know it for your build and you've been monitoring the market for a few days, you won't be able to pick up a bargain. You might get lucky now and then, you won't consistently make a lot of money from trading. But if you're actually you know, doing research for your build, you start to look for items for a week, you kind of know where the price is at. And this is when you see an underpriced item, you buy it and you sell it in a day or two and you make a pretty nice profit. So. What I do is, I won't go through all the items, but the idea follows. You want to be familiarized with the items you can use. And then if those items are underselling and you can use the item, well, as an upgrade or as, a, just say, a minor change for yourself. So the item's still useful if you don't sell it. 
then you can buy it knowing that this item is definitely underpriced by at least 50 chaos you buy it you can start selling it if it doesn't sell you can exchange with your current item and sell your current item for a different price so yes i know i went a little deeper with trading but this is definitely my biggest source of income actually so let me show you guys the website i'm just using for trading so let's go over here so basically this is the tab i'm searching i'm searching for level of soccer gems for the chess piece and i know like you know the chess piece price and i can go you know activate live search and whenever there's a new chess piece you'll pop up and if i see if it's undervalued or slightly nicer i actually should buy it for example this one if it's selling for about 70 chaos i can buy it i can sell it for 1.2 chaos a 1.2 exalt and i make about 50 chaos profit but at the moment i'm sitting on too many chess pieces and don't want to kind of stock too many up so i will pass this one for now well, sometimes I can ask the buyer if they're happy to do a bargain. I can purchase it quickly, they can use the currency, I can sell it later for a little higher. And similarly, over here you can see there's a lot of chess pieces I'm monitoring. This one is a plus two soccer duration, and similarly it's monitoring. And I am looking for headhunting in the future for other, other builds, but currently they're not selling that cheaply. So, coming back to Excel. And the second part I want to share with you guys is the farming strategies. Of course, the first strategy I made lots of exalt is from trading. The second part is farming strategies. So what I do with farming, and why do I say it's new player friendly, is that coming up, coming back here, what I do is I just farm Cyrus, but I farm it in a way that is actually fine for me. I'm having fun, you know, farming bosses, different maps. I'm actually having fun farming a bit of the barrel chamber or spider forest. And now spider forest is cheaper, so I farm the spider forest, I sell the barrel chambers. And I try to get lucky with the doctor, which never happens. <laughs> At least for now, we're about 10 or 20 maps in, not finding it. People are about 300 maps in to find one. So what I do is, I have a bunch of maps here with me. Ooh, where are my maps? Let me find my maps. What do I throw? I throw them over here. I have a bunch of rings to play around with. So what I do is, I have a bunch of maps with me. And I usually have them in a particular region. And I alchemy the tier 14 ones. And I basically chisel alchemy and valve the tier 16 ones. So I usually play the tier 14, 15 ones just with alchemy. And I play the higher ones, the tier 16 ones, with you know, the full upgrades of the chisel and alchemy and the valve up. I did spend a lot of my valve valving this on into the correct sockets just then. So you see me a little low on the valve ops. So I am actually pretty self-sufficient. I have enough map sustain to keep farming the maps. Each of the tier 14 maps that's not super juiced takes me about 2 to 3 minutes and each of those maps actually yield us about 10 to 15 chaos. So how this is going to work is that not only do you drop lots of the synchronatum splinter shards, I can't pronounce it properly, so you drop a lot of the delirium shards and once you get to 30 of them or 300 of them, you can sell them for a pretty hefty price. I'm listing mine a little higher just because I might want to use it later. So not only do you drop those shards, you can also drop the maps that takes you to the boss fragments. So this can be the elder ones or the shaper ones. Sometimes the elder one sells for more, sometimes the shaper one sells for more. But I'll be listing them a little higher and I eventually get them out. And those do come as a part of my profit. After that, I'm doing the blight if I see those maps. I'm doing the harbinger. I'm actually selling the harbingers. I'm not doing the harbinger of blight because it's actually just easier for me to farm those maps. By farming those maps, the tier 14 and tier 16 ones just with alchemy or you know chisel and alchemy, I can get to Cyrus about two hours to two and a half hours. Sometimes a little slower to about three hours, we get to one Cyrus. And this is when the income from Cyrus also comes in as well. So not only do the you know the Remedier, the Warlord, the Crusader and Hunters drop, you know, their exalted orbs, they drop Awakened Gems. I've got a few of those just from them, just from the Guardians. And the Cyrus drops the Awakener Orb and also the Exalted for Awakener. And on top of that, as you farm those maps, you'll be getting, you know, Zara missions, you get the Akka mission. I only do those two because they're easily translating to profit. And I'll show you guys the summary again over here. You can see that during my farming of maps, so basically I aim for the Cyrus farm, but I farm it quite effectively because I aim for three minutes a map and I aim for as many as the secret luxury shard reward as I can. The secret luxury shard reward, I can make two to three exalt a day just by collecting them and selling them to the market. I'm not farming them personally because I feel that I can be a supplier of that 
if I need items, I can just purchase from those farmers. And it takes me a little longer to farm them, and it's too repetitive. For the boss farming, the boss fragments from the Elder and Shapers do make me 3 to 5 exalt, sometimes even more exalt a day. And that add up to 7 days. So, synchronization charts, 2 to 3 exalt. The valuable maps I drop, so some of them are the you know, Desert Spring, some of them are the Palace, the Burial Chambers. They sell them for 1 to 2 exalt a day. Here I just say 7 exalt in 7 days. Valuable loots. So these can go from blighter maps to influence items, and those items are very fluctuating. Most of the time I make at least 2 to 3 exalt a day, just because I'm not playing those maps, I'm selling them most of them, and I do make 21 exalt pretty much in 7 days. And while you're farming, you'll be getting Cyrus jobs and the Guardian jobs. I'm aiming for 2 Cyrus a day, which takes me to 4 to 5 hours, and this means I'm killing 8 Guardians and 2 Cyrus. Usually, on average, the Cyrus drop 1 exalt a day, so sometimes it drops like 4 or 5 exalt because I weaken the, you know, awaken the gems and, you know, the awaken orb. Similarly, the Guardians do drop awaken gems. I've dropped a few nice ones. One of the best ones I've dropped is actually a uh, Weakened Brutality. And yeah, Weakened Brutality was dropped. And that was pretty good. I was pretty happy with that. So on average, I made about 8, let's say 8 Exalt total on 7 days, which is not that high. So this can definitely be higher, but I didn't count those. And notice that this over the week is actually adding up to about 140 Exalt. There is definitely ways that I can actually go further which I'll explain with you guys even more. So what's not counted is that I'm actually not counting the value book of the other currencies. So over here, I'm actually not selling a lot of the currencies I looted. You can see this like orb of alteration, there's you know, jeweler's orbs, there's a bit of the divine orbs we got, and a bit of the other orbs. Those kind of add up to maybe about two exalt, but I'm not really selling them because I didn't feel the need or the timing window for it. So let's come back here. <laughs> I had a message earlier. So. The Delirium Orbs, I actually have a bunch of those, I'll show you guys. I haven't sold any of the cards, the scallops, I just, you know, stored them in the inventory. And the maps I acquired will be at least 1 to 2 exalt, because I kind of have quite a bit of maps now, after a week of farming. So let's say the unsold items add up to, you know, add up to 7 exalt, and there is, you know, other things, actually, there's a few other things that's unsold, I'll show you guys over here. So what I mean by that is there is a lot of the Delirium Orbs I'm actually farming, I'm not selling them, because I might use them. And as I was recording this, there is a bunch of items I can be selling, and I listed that for together set 10 exalt. I'm listing those a little higher, you can see 7 exalt, 7 exalt, and a lot of the unsold items here, that kind of worth at least 80 KS each of those. This one for 40, those are like 1 exalt each at least. So that's at least 10 exalt here, and all those add up to maybe another 5 exalt. So there's a lot of things that's unsold over here, and that definitely exceeds 150 mark. I did buy some scrolls, you know, teleportation scrolls, identification scrolls. I did pay a little more for converting my chaos to exalt. Although the market was lower back then, I did pay a little premium, because I was buying from expensive sellers that sells a bunch of them to save time. The Catalyst I'm not selling, oh, actually I spent about 2 exalt in Catalyst to boost up my gears. So you can see there's life and mana modifiers on the rings, on the amulets, and that give me a little boost of life and survivability. And lastly, I got the chest piece upgrade, I got a few gems upgrade, and those are the pretty much the basic ones. And, oof, I should be put in D&D, my bad. And well, some of the biggest upgrade I've got is this one. I've got Impel support while farming. Those are very random, I didn't count them in, but this one is worth at least 5 exalt with level 21 and quality 23. Similarly, I was able to flip gems. Something I forgot to mention is that you can flip gems while farming. So I flipped my Awakened Mini Gems to level 6 here, and this is a risky one because it can go wrong. What I recommend is actually flipping the gems that's valuable on the market. So what's valuable is you want to have your offhand or the second inventory with weapons, for the six slots of flipping, and here I'm actually flipping the Spectre gems. I'll show you guys online what are the other good gems to flip. So what we do is we can go PoE and we could go PoE Ninja, and we come over here. We look for the gems that we can flip, and we got 21. And quality we got 20. This is the most accessible ones. And you look at the colors. Can you get yourself onto Val Blade Vortex? Can you get yourself onto Blood Magic? 
and if those are not like you don't want the massive gang ones because those are not flexible and sometimes you know people by all of a sudden not wanted you want something that's actually more flexible that's actually being steady that's around two weeks old initially i was flipping the zombies and the zombies were selling for about two weeks old now it falls to 1.7 i think i might flip the zombie again because it actually is quicker to flip compared to the specters it takes longer to level those so what you do with the flipping is after you decide the gems you want to flip you come back here you put the them in offhand so the second inventory here you can press x by switching them you push them over here you level those to level 20 by leveling with you know just mob farming or just mapping and after that you take one of the gems you go into your currency you take one of the gym cutter prison you sell the level 20 gems and the gem to the vendor and he will give you back a level one gem with quality 20 this is much better than you using the gym cutters, which is at least one chaos each. After getting the gem to level one again, you level a level 20 gem to level 20, and then you vow it with a vow up. There's a small chance, about 15% or maybe 10%, for you to get a level 21 gem, and this is very valuable. The price goes from 5 chaos to 1 to 3 exalt right away if you flip the right gem. You can see my summary over here that I was actually flipping gems and you can see the flipping is actually rewarding me for at least 5 exalt to about 15 exalt during the 7 days. So why did I only put 10 exalt here is actually I kept a lot of gems I flipped. So I am usually going to use them if I get them. For example, I didn't get the race zombies, I don't need the extra level for zombies. But over here I did keep the race specters on the level 21 gem. So and also I kept the awakened minion gem. And lastly, I kept the Impel support and also kept the Multi Strike. So those gems will sell for at least 5 Exalt to 10 Exalt together. And I kept them instead of actually selling them. So I could be a little more richer. Let's come back for a summary. So what I did overall is that I was mapping with about tier 14 maps to tier 16 maps. I was make, mapping it quite efficiently. So what I did was for the yellow ones you can see you get a bunch of yellow ones then you can get a tier one so for the yellow ones i'm using tier 14. for the tier one that guarantees uh you know additional packs of the influence maps i'm using a tier 16 that's chipped chiseled and also valved and alchemy and so every three of the nope the tier 14 ones i make sure i have one of the tier 16 ones ready and if it happens to be in the region of trying's end i try to use my spider first if it's the range of the over here, Vendor's Rest, which I don't play that much because I'm selling my Barrel Chambers. I'll actually use Barrel Chambers here, just to add efficiency. I'm aiming for more Cyrus farms. Every two hours and two and a half hours we farm a Cyrus, the jobs hasn't been great. About, you know, 10 Cyrus, I get one or two really good jobs, but that alone is actually really good in terms of mindset. So I have small target. I can play for half hour, and the half hour I'm doing, I'm just farming one influence map. And once this is done, I go to do something else. I come back for another half hour. I get another done. So once I get all four of them done, I fight Cyrus. And once I fight Cyrus, I clear out my inventory. So I do have a small guide um, video on how to clear an inventory. I clear out the inventory that I dump all the things that's unidentified. And I repeat this. And if I happen to get any fragments or any of the expensive items, I'm actually selling them while I'm playing. I do sell them for a little higher, but you know, for example, this one is selling for at least 40 chaos. Let's have a look. Yeah, this one sells for 40 for chaos. I'm overlisting about 9 chaos. So what, what I do is I eventually lower the price to 5 chaos that's higher than the market price. Because I don't have many of them, I don't have to rush sell. If I have lots of them, I might sell it at the market price. Coming back here, the whole mindset of actually farming for items is that you want to upgrade. And you do want to go for the items. For me, I'm actually saving for a headhunter. You can see that if I didn't buy the upgrades, if I didn't, you know, if I didn't, you know, kind of spend on other things, I could be actually very close or even buying a headhunter right now. I'm looking towards a headhunter build in the future, and I really want to try it out. And as a new player, I don't have, you know, the knowledge, knowledge for magic, fire, and other things. I think sticking with what I know the best with mapping and trading is the best way to do for now. I can definitely be quicker if I know how to, you know, do other things effectively or, you know, have a friend that with magic find raids that can be also very helpful. Lastly, for the trading system, 
There's one small tip that actually helps me make at least 50 chaos or maybe one exalt higher than usual with trading is that you might have heard me say I'm overselling my items. So if I'm overselling my items for 5 to 10 chaos, people might not buy it. But sometimes I might have an item of a similar category. So those are the you know the elder fragments, those are the shaper fragments. Sometimes I have a bunch of those. And if someone buys one of my overpriced fragment, I can actually offer them to buy the rest of my overpriced fragments for a small discount, which is still higher than the market price. Let's say I'm overselling for 8 chaos. I can sell everything overselling for 5 chaos and I have a bunch of them with me. And sometimes they're happy to buy it. So overall, I actually make them a service so they don't have to message everyone. They're actually just messaging me and getting a bunch of the fragments. And they do pay a little premium. But if someone wants blind maps, I actually offer my other blind maps. I say, hi, I also have those for, let's say, 30C. Do you also want it? So basically, I just ask the person, do you also want it? And let's say someone's buying the synchronization shards. If they're happy to buy my kind of slightly overpriced item, I'm happy to offer the rest of the item on the same price or a little lower than usual. So let's say if someone wants to buy for 92, I say I have three more for 92 or 91. Sometimes they just buy it. And yes, this is about 70 chaos higher than the market price. Similarly for the watchstones and similarly for the maps. If someone wants barrel chamber, I offer them my other barrel chambers. They might be willing to buy it or they might not. So I'm selling them for a little over the price, but if they want it, you know, I provide a service and they can collect a bunch of me. This doesn't work with items because people don't tend to buy bulk items, but the items here that kind of go along in a group can be used this way. So I thought this is a really nice trick and this provides a service which saves other people time. In return, you do earn about 50 or 1 exalt higher if you do consistently trading. I do sell about 10 to 20 shards every day because, oh, I forgot. Because I've been running the Eckhart mission and also the Zana mission, I'm actually making quite a bit of the profit just with Zana mission. Now with Eckhart, one thing I want to show you guys with Eckhart is that if you go to your mercenary, and if you look at the beast you have, sometimes you actually have some very expensive beast. <laughs> and if that's the case, <laughs> you actually want to get your hands on them. So what you do is you come over here and you can click on the beast, go to recipes, you scroll down and you look for something that's very variable. I got a forest then and this little frog tiger alpha was sold for 100 chaos. And I was able to get something like turning a unique into another unique and was able to get some of the mods. Those little beasts can be captured into a capsule and be sold on the market. So make sure you check your beast tree. And those can be sold for like 7 to 8 chaos. I think this one sells for maybe 20 or 30 chaos. And if you find them worth it, what you do is you come back to our little friend here, Hackett. But I love him. He's so funny. You buy one of the one chaos beast three ops. You click onto your existing beast and you drag them onto the inventory. Don't click it again. If you click it again, it will pop back to your beast three. I did the ones on mistake, so I lost one chaos. So make sure you don't right click the item after. You will instantly use it. So make sure you just click it onto your beast and trade it on the market. People do buy them if you double check your prices. I made about one to two or maybe three exalt with Eckhart. But I can definitely make a little more. So overall, this is a pretty comprehensive but little over the place guide for how I made my exalt. You can see that a bit of the smart trading, a bit of the mapping, and a bit of the you know insights to the game does help. I am no way close in the veteran level of Path of Exile. I have played about three weeks into the league and Last league I played for 10 days, so I'm learning a lot from everyone. Yeah, I'm learning a lot from everyone, and currently I'm still learning crafting, I'm not doing much of the devolving, a lot of things I still haven't done. So bear with me if I do make a few mistakes, guys, and you know, let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions and tips where I can go further, and what are the things I can learn with you guys as well. Thank you so much for watching guys hopefully you find it this guide helpful because i thought hey i'm not making hopefully a lot of income but it's okay enough for most players to get geared up with 100 or 150 exalt and i think it's not bad over the week of playing because i love the game i'm playing six to eight hours a day and this may be one of the reasons i'm making more of it because the more you play the more you get but if you play smartly and if you trade correctly you actually make a lot more 
Thank you again for watching, guys. Stay safe, stay hydrated, and stay healthy at home. And if you do want to go outside, make sure you go outside when it's sunny. Get some sun, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc. It's very important for immunity. I wish you guys all the best. And, you know, stay safe out there. Take care, my friends. I'll see you guys next time.